human negotiations to manual insertion orders for websites. Uh, advertising has come a long way with programmatic. Uh, if I were to talk about something in the, on a lighter note, I would say uh, back in the day, programmatic advertising was the closest that advertising could get to rocket science. Because back then, uh, while everyone knew that it was the next big thing, nobody quite understood the domain. Uh, cut to now, we're having full-fledged conferences on programmatic advertising. And it speaks volumes about the kind of impact the technology has had in the advertising business in India. And to speak more on that, uh, in the context of commerce, uh, we have with us a very knowledgeable marketer, uh, Kedar, who's currently with Kotak Mahindra Bank. And in his past life, uh, he was with Amazon for 10 long years. So thank you for joining us, Kedar. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure being here and, and love the way you guys have been conducting this. I think it's been third of the fourth year now and, and good to see this particular topic getting so much of, uh, you know, uh, support and, and interest. Now, now, Kotak Mahindra has an exponential growth in the past few years. And I think the credit goes to its digital marketing strategy as well. Uh, but we want to dive, dive a little deeper. We want you to tell us how important has programmatic advertising been in this journey for you? Uh, I think uh, overall in India, we are at a very interesting uh, time when banks are trying to be fintech and fintechs are trying to be banks. And, and I say this very often uh, in every conversation. And what that means really is uh, you start treating banks more like, you know, backwards of what consumer need. Uh, that's, that's a big shift. As, as you see, uh, when, you, when you have to scale your businesses, there's no better way than, than taking your journeys digitally. Uh, what, what has happened in the past few years uh, is, is also the way Kotak has really taken up programmatic buying or, or the way they've reorganized themselves around driving uh, overall acquisitions as well as overall cross-selling, upselling digitally. And uh, at the heart of it has been the apps and, and from there I think they've gone really deeper. There have been four or five big things uh, if you reflect and see. I think the first thing that, that, that has really helped is, is defining the customer journeys. I think that's first big thing where the, the more frictionless these journeys are, the higher output that you get in, in any kind of investment that you make. I think that was first big shift. The second has been segmenting and going really deep in your consumers. And the more you know your consumers, the better your solves are, the better your uh, uh, whatever you recommend to consumers, I think that's kind of been great. And the last part is once you know your consumers, I think the, the higher the match rates that you drive, which is your first party data and the lookalikes that you have, the more you're able to match them, the higher the returns have been. If, I, if you look at a meta analysis of data across not just this sector anywhere, Anyone who operates with a match rate higher than 60 to 70% tends to have a higher conversion rates and hence sees more uh, investments going towards programmatic. So I, I think kudos to all the marketeers, to all the teams and everyone in the, in the organization to have picked this up much ahead of time. You know, I remember really going through one of your campaigns, the 811 campaign, uh, which was about a digital bank account. Uh, that kind of increased your loan applications by 99%. Now, of course, a lot is dependent on reaching the right consumer at the right time on the right medium. But I want to understand from you, how important is creativity in this process? Uh, like, how important is it to bring that in, uh, to actually convert that customer interest into actual sale, especially for a serious bank, uh, brand like yours? Um, I'm glad you asked this. A lot many times the a, a misconception is that programmatic bias is basically or programmatic marketing is essentially devoid of creativity and, and you tend to kind of do an A-B testing to say, hey, X creative works better than Y and then you really can automate all of it and drive it. I think uh, uh, creativity is, is very much at the center of it, I would say. And if you were to think of it, the, if, you, if you look at the traditional marketing, the toughest creative has always been an out of home because you have to literally write one line on it. 
and uh, uh, you know programmatic in, in many ways resembles that because what you have to do there is you really have to prune and pick and be sharp in what you want to communicate to your consumer and in a very very uh, in, a, in a way that really has a stop value at the same time can engage and get an action done. So what you're essentially asking of the consumer is probably much more than what you end up doing in a normal traditional medium. So creativity is important. Creativity stemming from data and stemming from understanding consumer, I think that's the new part. Uh, as, as opposed to earlier where it was largely about how well you understood a consumer. Now there is enough trends and back data that you can go and, and from you know crunching those data to be able to get to certain insights. I think that aids creativity. If you use that to your advantage, I think you, you tend to have a much better output going in uh, for you. So your investments would definitely see a much better returns as you kind of match it. Uh, if you cut, keep it cut and dry, then you tend to see a short term results where there will be a lot of transactional outputs that you will get and often you kind of uh, confuse short term results to brand being good, which may not necessarily be the case. Yeah, that brings me to this very interesting case study which has impressed me in the past. A couple of years ago, I think in, in Jaipur, uh, there were these weekly power cuts uh, which this brand called Luminous Inverters kind of identified and what they did was they would advertise to the consumer on the mobile just when the power cuts were happening. So it kind of amplified their message in a very smart way when people are actually suffering. So and this was courtesy their programmatic partner, I, I'm not sure, I think it was MIQ. Uh, now, I want to know, uh, you know, from the conversations I have had with marketers in the past, it's a very linear process. You know, you first have a pitch for creative, digital, for media, and then at the end you bring in your programmatic partners. Do you think there is merit in kind of getting the programmatic partner also in the process much ahead, uh, you know, so that you can actually benefit from that digital data crunching and all of that? Yeah, I think... Uh, uh the switch has already happened a lot. If you look at a lot of agencies that come to you now, they will start with a full stack solutions that they have. Very interesting uh, as, as you know, at Kotak we are kind of looking at partners and here's a call to all of them who are also interested in, in kind of working and, and developing new things. But I met a few people and, and they, they literally questioned everything we did. And with data, with creatives, and, and they literally brought not just programmatic, but that led to a bunch of things that the brand should be doing. So the way, especially when you have a complete digital journeys, I think a lot changes in the way you start conceiving your investments or you start conceiving your campaigns and your journey. So uh, I, I do feel that the ones who, who pick this up and make it the center are the ones who are going to be the, uh, the, the big game changers in the next four or five years. Uh, and I, I, I feel that there is a lot of merit in kind of seeing it as integrated as opposed to something being first or something being at the end. And there's a thing called through the journey or through the funnel. The more you start seeing it as through the funnel and uh, you know, start looking at all your investments as through the funnel investments, a lot changes, you'll, you'll start building your campaigns and your measurements in a very, very different way. You know, uh, Kedar, a big part of uh, what a marketer does, I think, is uh, directed by how much money you're saving. Uh, and programmatic does that beautifully, I think. You know, you can do advanced targeting with, uh, you know, maybe half the costs. Uh, I want to know from you an example, you know, where Kotak perhaps uh, used it to its advantage and maybe uh, redirected the monies when you felt it was not working in the, in the right way. I mean, not, now that you can do that real time with programmatic. Yeah, I think... Uh, uh there are lots of advantages of, of being sharper in your investments because the spill is less. As the spill is less, the same money could give you a higher return. And uh, uh, that just, there are, there are two ways as you see it. One is a good marketeer might take the monies that are saved and double down on the campaigns as opposed to <laughs> taking that money and flying it back. So uh, as, as we see it, uh, uh, I've, I've uh, I've seen a few campaigns where, you know, uh, especially targeted to existing. So, take an example of a, 
uh, account that you have and you want your consumers to upgrade to a certain account, the live case that we are working on. Uh, and, and when we looked at how do you really upgrade an existing account holder to a new account uh, which may perhaps be a better account for the consumer, there were ways in which we really thought about it. Uh, programmatic was one way where we said that okay, hey, let's just take and make this campaign all about internal data and then basis your internal data go and target it. As, as we started doing that, we realized that we are we are going to be operating at a much higher frequency, at a much better reach in a certain set of audience which otherwise would have been underserved and would have been in some ways going a little broader. And by that I don't mean broadcast, by this I mean a difference of about a good thousand basis points which is a huge thing when it comes to a, a very small set of audience that you're going after. So uh, uh, I think there is 811 is a great example not just from a campaign point of view but in many ways in the way uh, you know we have really gone ahead and, and uh, been super sharp and, and been able to uh, acquire uh, a very huge set of consumers in a, in a very short time. The other brand that comes to my mind and I have seen this journey first hand do this really well was Google. I think Google Pay, uh, I don't know how many of you all would have ever seen an ad of Google Pay anywhere. Uh, hardly any investment when it comes to mass or a traditional way but all of their entire uh, you know UPI uh, journey has been completely in the way they have managed and, and kudos to the team uh, to have done that. So that's another great example to see. Uh, another thing is I think uh, marketers for decades have had this, uh, have had a difficulty connecting their ad spends to actual customer uh, purchases. Now by linking content with commerce today I think a big part of that battle has, is won. So I, tell me how much, what percentage of your overall budget do you dedicate to uh, like shoppable ads or uh, maybe when influencers are uh, live streaming, you know there are these uh, icons where you can click and directly purchase or any uh, such mediums, uh, what percentage do you really devote from your marketing budget? I think uh, uh, this is a classic, uh, I always remind again to to everyone I interact with is there was this article, HBR article number one which was classic sales versus marketing and uh, sales versus marketing really made sure that marketeers were working hard and at the same time the sales teams were working hard. Over a period of time what has really happened is uh, you know you've started making all your marketing very very rational. So that's a good and the bad part. The moment you make everything rational and you make all your investments literally tied to just here and now outputs, you are losing out on something which is very, very core which is equity of a brand and how do you do it. So at one end there is a good part where whatever you have invested you know the output and hence you decide whether or not you should double down but more, most often the, the tenures of the roles that people handle have shrunk and, and unfortunate that the brand takes a suffering. So uh, while uh, and that's, that's, that's a piece that you know we need to caution to be, to be very cautious about uh, while you know programmatic is great but at the same time there's, there's a need for the investments to be balanced. Uh, in terms of what happens uh, uh, I think a lot many times uh, when you're in a situation where you're answerable to your spends your go-to becomes a medium which is measurable and, and that's what the challenge was for digital a long time ago. Like you know uh, I go back to my CPG days and in, a, in the CPG days we were, we were, we all knew what a TV would do, we would rather put money behind a wall painting versus putting a money on YouTube you know because nothing was measurable then and it was a notional spend, we didn't. But now I think it's very, very different. It's very easy to say, hey, what is the impression and hence how many clicks and finally how many of them could convert. Shoppable ads have come to your rescue. A CPG guy sitting in can now tell how many chips were sold by an ad put, being put up on an Insta. So you're, you're taking the convenient route of explaining internally on what your uh, marketing monies are doing. So it's convenience but at the same time, if you, if you get it right, there's lots that, that uh, you finally end up uh, uh, measuring and putting. A good mix if you were to look at it and this is CPG, commerce, 
and uh, in, in some sense BFSI. I think uh, it, 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 it depends on the journey of the brand, it depends on the life stage of an of a organization, a product. Uh, when you are at probably a growth stage uh, uh, and, and if you are already at an MVP or an MLP, it's a great idea to kind of go double down on programmatic or let's say performance where you know th and, and during that stage you may probably end up having a much higher skew towards your investment but then as, as your numbers start settling in, as your Mao Dao kind of starts settling in is, is, is when you need another hockey stick and that's when uh, you know going mass much broader might give you a much higher returns or, or probably can help you scale and that's been the journey if you look at most startups they are now kind of coming to a point saying that okay, hey, we, are, we are now hitting a, a, a you know almost a, a dead road saying that okay, our numbers are, are kind of stagnant, all the unicorns and you see that happening much more in India because they've all kind of relied a lot on investments. But once you settle, I think a, a, a ratio of about a 70, 30 or 60, 40 kind of uh, gets you well. Again, this is through the funnel depending on the task and what you have. Uh, if you're already at a mature stage, yes, that kind of a ratio works. You just spoke about measurement. Now, digital actually has that problem where you have multiple mediums, multiple platforms, but no common measurement. So for you, when you put in that kind of investment, what is that, uh, how do you gauge that impact of that particular investment on programmatic now? See, I think uh, uh, at least in the, uh, there is a lot of, there's a common currency that we all understand, right, when it comes to the brand. Equity, Tama, Spawn, Consideration, past three months, attributes, triggers, barriers, like there are a whole host of these uh, common matrices that we are all uh, used to and hence we can gauge and know, uh, map our investments. Uh, the beauty on digital is that these could be customized to the task that you have and which is what is the existence uh, or the role of, of uh, programmatic or digital in many ways. So uh, while you may not have a common metric known but certain health of your brand or a certain health of the business are still, they, they're still common. For example, cost of acquisition or ROIs, the fact that have you been able to get new to XYZ business or repeat to your business. So these are all very common, they're just referred very, very differently. Uh, uh, there is there's a lifetime value that you calculate. So a banking sector might call it as a RV for e-commerce might refer it to as you know lifetime a lifetime value DSOPS GMS so there are different terms but there are already known terminology that is there and I think they fall under certain brackets but the flexibility of having customizing your campaigns to that task is what makes this medium beautiful and another thing is um, artificial intelligence is considered to be this transformative force in all things digital and across advertising. How important is it for programmatic advertising and have you used it in the past and you know, to your advantage? Uh, I think uh, we all had AI as part of what we used to do, right? Like to me, AI was that macro that you built on your Excel when you were trying to manage your stocks or when you are trying to manage and solve uh, a complex problem uh, in your assignments uh, to now where it's all hidden in a black box and, and AI is what we, we see it. Uh, it's just that the scope and the width with which uh, you know some of these models can do and the pace at which it can do are, are, are uh, really worth taking notice of. Um, if, you, if you ask me uh, a few things where I have seen AI change the way we have looked at it, I think uh, content as well as and within content if you see the way voice cloning, the way influencers slash leveraging clones or, or let's say certain mask kits to be replaced completely without anyone being there is a big shift, is a, is a huge shift. So uh, there were times when you know you would dread having a celebrity on your brand but just because there was little flexibility of being able to uh, make content with them given the time so on and so forth now you could literally have clones now you could literally have everything done easily without any you know without any uh, uh, logistical challenges that you have so i think when you when you look at even programmatic there's a bunch of things that are there in terms of content in the way an email could be written in a, a, a way a sms could go in a way a notification could go any form of content I think is is very easy to to change. You you could get just write and type the mood in which you want it, and you'll have ten versions. So, I think uh, content is one place where AI 
in programmatic is probably doing. You'll speak a lot about segmentation, you speak a lot about meta-analysis, you speak a lot about custom uh, creation, but I think uh, what really makes a difference is again in the way the content will start being made and built. Uh, I think that would be a, a big, sp uh, that, that's a space to watch out for. I think Kedar, we have just about enough time for one question from the audience. Do we ha have anybody who wants to raise a question? <laughs> All right. Okay, so I, I have one last one for you. Uh, you know, we are, uh, we've, we've done so much in programmatic advertising. I just want to understand from you that one game changer in the field, uh, you know, which was unthinkable perhaps uh, years ago, and that has happened and that surprises you when it comes to programmatic advertising today. I think, uh, uh I recently met someone who's been uh, working on on this for some time, and uh, this is this is yet to be launched. But uh, what what they've managed to do is they've managed to crunch the entire cycle of inciting to finally segmenting to messaging and creating content and finally getting a measurement done. So think of this as an end-to-end -end stack that you could just you know plug and play. And it will basically tell you for each segment what problem it has and hence design a creative and all of this being done in less than an hour's time. So you could essentially have a full through the funnel campaign that can be developed all at, at you know, all by just telling what problems you're facing and, and that's about it. So a full stack of measurement, content, mounting, you know, having the media buy done for you, all of it. And, that's such a game changer for all the SMEs. That's such a game changer for people who do not want to have like huge marketing teams. It's it's like end to end being being collapsed into literally a, a small solution that that you can apply. I think that's that's where it is headed, and that's where we are. Super. So I think we've covered miles and miles still to go. Thank you so much, Kedar, for that very insightful conversation. I learned so much, and yeah. Yep. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for this. <laughs>